Hello and welcome to tonight's book reading session of Preparing for the Day After, a picture ebook. Tonight is the concluding, concluding session of the book reading. I will be reading out uh, a critical scrutiny of the practicability and the viability of the legislation. Before we start that, let me start uh, with a recap of what we have learned so far. Water and sanitation is central to developmental discourse. Culture sensitive food security is also has also evolved out of local agrometeorological conditions prevalent in an area. Livelihoods based on local agrometeorological conditions are the best means of ensuring livelihood security. Climate change adaptation menstrual hygiene especially for indigenous tribal women solid waste management universal health care access sustainable development goals they are all factors to be included in the development agenda media personnel have to be trained in reporting disaster preparedness or the lack of it at district level <coughs> disaster is the impact of a calamity on the human landscape this includes the impact on lives livelihoods livestock and landscape tonight we will start with the conclusion the conclusion session that includes a critical review of the legislation and policy guidelines in uh, disaster risk reduction uh, thought and uh, the domain and the legislation climate change is not climate change is not a watershed event like the asian tsunami for instance unless we have a huge super volcanic event or an explosion which has global impact and can lead to an ice age quite overnight the Anthropocene version of climate change is triggered by anthropogenic factors like industrial pollution and unsustainable development far in excess of other natural geological causes and cycles. Climate change manifests as an increase in the intensity of extreme weather even. So you have more frequent avalanches, blizzards in colder areas, more precipitation, more and intense cyclones, cloud bursts, coastal incursion, droughts and desertification, epidemics, flash floods, floods, famine, Fog, fugue, forest fires, global warming, hailstorms, mudslides, landslides, that's the El Nino for you, a sea level rise and iceberg melt trigger tsunamis, urban floods and so on. Each of these extreme weather events can have colossal impact on human community. The consequences include food and livelihood insecurity, lack of shelter causing more imbalanced fiscal growth. Pure fiscals include impaired tax regimes, impact on public health like COVID-19 for example has shown us, impact on international trade and commerce, tax, aviation, shipping, public health, human development and so on. Today let me read to you about the schedule of completion of action points, a critical review of policies and legislation in disaster risk reduction thought. Schedule of completion of action point. The timelines proposed for the implementation of various activities in the guidelines are considered both important and desirable, especially in the case of those non-structural measures for which no clearances are required from central or other agencies. Uh, precise schedules for structural measures will, however, be evolved in the FMPs that will follow at the level of central ministries and states, duly taking into account the availability of financial, technical and managerial resources. In case of compelling circumstances warranting a change, consultation with the National Disaster Management Authority will be undertaken well in advance for any adjustment on a case-to-case -case basis. Ideal indeed but needs effective scrutiny. Though such ideal guidelines are drafted by experts in anointed committees, in today's day and age it helps to widen the scope of harvesting the intellectual capital. All these guidelines are only as effective as the scrutiny of their effective implementation. Democracy demands transparency. Fortunately, India has a robust and independent media whose sacred duty it is to scrutinize public governance. India also has the Right to Information Act, something that our bureaucracy still respects fearfully. Only when documentation surmises the effective implementation of such idealistic guidelines can we say that disaster risk reduction has been achieved successfully. In the interest of evolution of thought and in offering transparent governance, it augurs well to widen the horizons of intellectual capital by means of debating the pros and cons of policy formulation, interactive websites which would widen participatory polity, offer transparent and graphic legislation, governance and policy formulation. Indeed, there is a need to do so. The added advantage would be stimulation of nascent talent and most important, unknown reserves of intellectual capital. Another significant factor is corruption. How can we invest public interest 
in corrupt officials. Even if they are public servants in service of the nation, the minions in our secretariats all too often forget whom they are supposed to serve, themselves or the nation. They view legislation and policy as no more than cumbersome irritants in their growth of monetary wealth, their job security and their pensions and perks. I have heard officers of the Andaman Nicobar administration saying in jest, and I quote, that officer has surpassed tsunami levels of corruption in misappropriating relief money. In such circumstances, we, the people, of India are criminals uh, in tolerating such levels of corruption. By being silent spectators, we are doing a great disservice to the nation. We, the people of India, also must understand public interest and desist from self-serving behavior. Violation of all rules and regulations leads to dent of quality. Non-conformance to climate neutral behavior, for example, causes misery to the poor fishermen, agricultural farm laborer and the tribal. We, the people of India, must do our two bits for horizontal economic growth, inclusive development, just so that we carry the marginalized have-nots with us towards the goal of higher standard of living and alleviation of poverty. Checklist for safe hydrometeorological disaster mitigation. This is important. For those of you who are students or you are appearing for the civil services, please take note. Checking the dams, sluice gates in summer months helps in sustaining the dams and the water level management in monsoons in South Asia. Effective flood forecasting is the key to disaster mitigation. Early warning is the key to reducing loss of lives and to mitigate disasters. Watershed management, rainwater harvesting, uh, soil conservation and restoration of soil nutrition are quintessential to hydrometeorological disaster mitigation. Check Dams are more effective and sustainable in flood control than big dams. Lives and livelihoods are inextricably tied to water security. Transparent governance is a must and the governments must cooperate with vigilant public for transparent governance. Media must display initiative and responsibility in scrutinizing administrative measures. Go green. That is the simplest and the most effective measure to mitigate hydrometeorological disasters. It calls for planning, transparent governance and disciplined implementation of policy guidelines. And with that, we have finished the book reading of preparing for the day after. For the next four weeks, as promised, I I will run slide shows on subjects of mudslides, sea level rise, coastal incursion and volcanic perspective of climate change. Trust me, it will be fascinating. But there will be no more book reading as such. It's over. It was not possible for me to do research on all the subjects without public funding. Nevertheless, the slides I'm sure will be fascinating. And do not forget to uh, tune in for the live interaction tomorrow. That will be 4th of June 2022. Please do tune in for the live interaction and come up with a lot of questions. I hope it will be useful and productive. I look forward to meeting, or meeting you all at the live interaction. Take care.